Carry on. So here we're going to look at the diet for pregnancy and breastfeeding. Now there's a lot of different opinions on diet. <laughs> there always has been and there's been a lot of um, different kinds of diets that have been coming up. So the perspective you're going to get here is more of the yogic point of view and also from the classic naturopathic point of view. So the yogic view on diet is that we should be eating to live, not living to eat. So that's also important to apply it in pregnancy, not only for um, the regular person. So we need to eat the food that is necessary for us um, to be nourished, to grow our baby, but we're not living just to eat whatever we want all the time. We need to think about our diet, have awareness of our diet and make the right choices. Um, the yogic view also says to have foods that are going to be light uh, and easy to digest so that we don't have to use a lot of our energy to digest the food and that means that our energy can be used for other purposes instead and you'll all know if you eat something very very heavy then you also feel a little bit sluggish a little bit tired you're not full of energy like you might be with some really light food and of course you want it to be easy to digest as well because there can be more digestive issues for women in pregnancy you know things like gases and um, sometimes like acids and things like that so you want it to be nice simple uh, and what we call sattvic food then the next point is about being non-attached so eating as per our need we're not eating just for the sake of it or getting attached to no 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 I have to have this food this is the only food I want to be having we need to keep uh, non-attached and then looking at food as a source of prana so we want to be eating foods that are going to have high levels of prana or you can say vitality in them so the fresher the food, the more prana is going to be in that. So trying to eat, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, trying to eat uh, local foods, foods that haven't been frozen or foods that have not been processed as much. The more processing the food has uh, gone through, of course, the less prana is going to be in it, if there's any at all. So we're trying to have those high energy foods. Now looking a little bit more, so a vegetarian diet, which is traditionally a yogic diet, is more on the vegetarian side. So it can be good for pregnancy. The only thing to take care of is that it is well balanced. You get a lot of variety in vegetarians. Um, some are eating really, really well and they're super healthy and other people are vegetarian, but they're not eating in a balanced way so they it might be that they're not having uh, enough protein they're not having enough foods so that are having you know iron and b vitamins um, so it is important that it's really well rounded again a lot of opinions have been there about having a vegetarian diet for pregnancy now in some parts of the world it's common and it's normal and in other parts of the world a vegetarian diet is not um, as common and uh, a lot of people can be worried that, oh, am I going to get enough nutrients, um, you know, for my baby to grow? But yes, if you are having a well-balanced diet, then definitely it's absolutely fine in pregnancy. And now there's so much research out there supporting um, a vegetarian diet and the great benefits that can be there. So if we're looking at the diet, um, trying to have a whole food diet. So as we spoke on, we don't want to have foods that are really, really processed. So trying to have um, whole grains instead, uh, beans, legumes, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. Uh, if one isn't vegetarian, then fish is a better option uh, instead. But still you want to make sure that that, sea, that fish is not a deep sea fish. So those fish that are really, really large, so things like uh, tuna, which can have a lot of heavy metals uh, inside. So we don't want that kind of um, thing there for a pregnant woman or her baby. Uh, then eating lots of fresh fruit and vegetables. So ideally three quarters of the diet should be fruit and vegetables. Uh, and most people it's not. Usually carbohydrates is much 
higher. So trying to increase the amount of vegetables. Um, with vegetables also you want to make sure that you're having both raw and cooked. Um, of course everyone has different body types and if you look from the Ayurvedic perspective then some women will find that they need more cooked foods and other women will need more raw foods. You also need to think of the environment that one is in. If it's the middle of summer, then uh, definitely raw food is going to be um, a little higher. Uh, whereas if it's the middle of winter, then more cooked foods are going to be there. So obviously you need to eat according to the environment as well. Um, here I've uh, put eating a large salad or lightly steamed vegetables daily is just going to increase your vegetable count, which is really important. Then we want to decrease things like meat if one isn't vegetarian, uh, refined sugar, coffee, tea, processed foods. So, you know, all the junk foods and fried foods, cakes, biscuits, crisps, butter, margarine, and salt. You know, all those things that we know are not uh, particularly nourishing for us. We want to eat moderate amounts of grain foods, uh, legumes, nuts, and if one isn't vegetarian, then moderate amounts of fish. So fruit and vegetables is a uh, higher, particularly vegetables. Uh, and if one is uh, not vegetarian, so if they are eating meat, then they should try to eat more vegetables to compensate for that lack of fibre. Because if you see um, the, the gut and how long things take to go through uh, our body system. Uh, if one is vegetarian, then it goes through much faster, whereas um, when one is eating meat, it takes a lot longer for the foods to be digested, basically because meat is very heavy and of course it's not having fiber inside it. So eating more vegetables is definitely essential um, to try to improve the digestive function. And then uh, for the carbohydrates, you want to eat um, more carbohydrates that are unrefined and the complex ones, of course, not the simple ones. So, you know, instead of having white sugar, you can have um, honey or maple syrup, or there's lots of other options these days as well. Um, if instead of having like white bread or white pasta, having the whole meal version. Uh, so especially, you know, if one has bread, making it oneself is always better because you know how much wholemeal is in there. Um, you know, in some countries they call certain breads brown bread, but it's just colouring. So you want to make sure that it actually is having the unrefined uh, flours in there. Uh, and then uh, whole grains. So in brown rice instead of white rice, you know, there's millet, there's barley, there's loads of different types of grains uh, out there that we can eat in a less processed form. Using cold pressed unrefined vegetable oils is a, is a good option, uh, such as olive oil, um, rice bran oil is also common. Of course, it will depend on where you're living and what's available as well and what suits you. Um, making sure that if you are going to be using butter, then using unsalted butter or trying to reduce your salt if you find that it's a lot. Um, definitely eliminating things like margarine because margarine is highly processed and um, it doesn't have any benefits. <laughs> uh, then looking at the water content, so you do want to of course make sure that you're drinking water or herbal teas throughout the day, um, not just with meals and it's, it's anyway not recommended to have huge amounts of um, water with your meal because it's going to be diluting the juices. There is a tendency in some countries to have your food and then drink a whole glass of water which is definitely not very helpful um, for digestion. So it's better to have small amounts throughout the day and of course listening to the body and seeing when one is thirsty. So you don't just drink water for the sake of it and make sure that um, you're thirsty and you drink and also you can check um, you know, when going to the toilet. Um, if the urine is completely clear then you're probably drinking too much. If it's very um, yellow then you need to be drinking more. And of course, you have to look at the environment you're in as well. If it's summer, then definitely um, with sweating and so on, you'll need to drink more uh, liquids. Then the next point of varying the diet. It is important to have a huge variety of foods uh, in your diet. So not just sticking to a couple of uh, things that you really enjoy, but trying to have those different variety in your diet so that you can have different combinations of um, vitamins and minerals um, that will be absorbed. 
The next point is resting your digestive system when you can. Um, it is a little harder during pregnancy because women often need to eat small amounts and more frequently, but taking care with avoiding eating too late at night, um, and especially because if she's having heartburn and she's eating and sleeping, that can make her feel very uncomfortable, uh, and also eating light in the morning, and especially in pregnancy, if she's having nausea, she's not going to eat huge meals for breakfast. So small regular meals are a better option. Uh, and of course, we want to try to eat slowly and with awareness of what we're eating, being grateful for our food as we eat as well. So if one is sitting in front of a, a TV or a book or a mobile phone, then one's not going to be as aware as they eat. And this other point is important. Uh, don't stress out about your diet. Remember that it is what you eat. 95% of the time, not what you eat 5% of the time. So, you know, if you're going going out with a friend and having a piece of cake, it's not a big deal. One doesn't need to feel really guilty about it. But if one's going to be eating, you know, cake with every meal, then of course it's not going to be a good thing to do. So it's all about moderation. So here's just an example of um, a healthy diet. Of course, there's lots of different types of food we can be eating. And in every culture, um, one has different recipes and meals that they uh, eat, which is normal for them. So this is just an example. So for breakfast, say having um, a fruit salad, fresh fruits, or porridge, say porridge with uh, oat porridge, uh, with sultanas. So that's like the raisins uh, and some apple or fresh fruit and natural yogurt. So whether that's dairy yogurt or it may be a coconut yogurt or soy yogurt or almond yogurt, there's lots of different options these days. Uh, or muesli with yogurt and nuts and maybe some fruit as well. So they, they're nice uh, breakfast to have. Then lunch, an example is like a wholemeal sandwich with a salad or a vegetable soup or a large salad and dinner and of course lunch and dinner can be interchanged because uh, many people these days are trying to uh, have a lighter dinner which is also very good uh, so it might be the same kind of thing at lunch so stir fried vegetables and tofu baked vegetables with some beans whole milk pasta with the lentil sauce and vegetables uh, vegetable and chickpea curry uh, with brown rice. So they're just ideas on, on what can be uh, eaten. And of course, snacks is one that is often important for pregnant women. Uh, so fresh fruit, uh, different vegetable sticks, so like carrot, cucumber, celery, uh, whole grain crackers, we say nut butter or hummus. Hummus is from the chickpea. It could also be from any other bean like mung bean. Um, and one can have vegetable sticks with nut butter or hummus. Uh, peanut butter and celery sticks is a fairly common combination. Even many um, people will eat fruit with nut butter like uh, almonds, uh, almond butter with uh, apple. Then natural yogurts, nuts and seeds are also options. Uh, looking at drinks, so of course water is one. <laughs> Fruit and vegetable juices, so ideally if one is having juices they should be freshly made, they shouldn't be um, packaged juices. And still taking care that if one is having fruit juices that they should be diluted because there can be high, high amounts of sugar in them and especially if one isn't using the whole fruit then uh, it can be a little too strong. Then things like dandelion coffee, there's lots of alternatives to coffee these days uh, that are available. So whether it's dandelion or chicory or other kind of herbal coffees, different types of herbal teas are also available, uh, like peppermint. Peppermint can be good for um, if she's feeling nauseous. Spearmint, uh, also for nausea. Chamomile is good for digestion. Chamomile is also good for sleep and also for anxiety. Uh, rose hip is good particularly for vitamin C uh, and lemon and ginger are also nice uh, herbal tea. So there's lots of other options as well um, that we can have. So looking at um, some of the vitamins and minerals that are needed 
in pregnancy. So folic acid is one that is well known. And if a woman is going to take any kind of supplement, then folic acid is the recommended one to take. And it is recommended to take it immediately. So as soon as she knows she's pregnant, and if she's planning to conceive, then she should be taking it before conception as well because they say that first six weeks is really really important that she has enough of that folic acid um, because it helps to prevent spina bifida um, neural tube defects so folic acid is also um, available in like dark green leafy vegetables and beans and in whole wheat or wheat wheat germ um, and a lot of cereals uh, are also fortified with folic acid. Uh, generally, if someone is asking me about supplements to take, now I'm more on the side of having whole foods uh, instead of supplements as much as possible. But if one is to take a supplement, this is the one that I would recommend um, for the first trimester very strongly. Uh, for vegetarians, B12 is also necessary. So one might also want to check um, the nutrient levels and you can get a B12 test to check and because often vegetarians can be a little lower and vegans especially can have low levels of uh, B12. Uh, calcium, vitamin D and zinc are all essential as well. You'll see the next point zinc deficiency is linked to longer labors so one does want to make sure that their zinc levels are okay and there are uh, tests to do this one can even do it themselves with like a zinc taste test um, to check the zinc levels. It's also linked to postnatal depression. So you can see zinc is actually really, really important uh, in pregnancy and to help with the maternal instinct. So to help with that connection between um, mother and baby. And we can get zinc in things like eggs, nuts, beans, um, dairy and meat. So of course a vegetarian diet is generally a little less than um, one that isn't. Uh, so looking at calcium, it's also essential for strength of the bones. Uh, we can get calcium in things like uh, almonds, fortified soy, uh, in figs, sesame seeds are also one that has a lot of calcium in it, um, cashews as well. Now, uh, there's a lot of debate related with uh, dairy milk or cow's milk um, related to calcium. Some say there is calcium, some say there isn't. There's research <laughs> that supports both. Um, on the other side of uh, the research, there's research uh, showing that the calcium is uh, actually leached out of the bones when we, when we are drinking cow's milk. So it is a little hard to um, decide. Uh, related to that it is a very controversial issue but I think it's important that you get calcium from all different sources. Um, dark green uh, leafy vegetables also have calcium in so that's also another thing one can be eating. Uh, then looking at uh, iron it's also essential um, for the blood so we've got green vegetables, almonds, whole grains, uh, molasses is another option that's another uh, less processed uh, sweetener, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds also have lots of zinc in uh, and also sunflower seeds so they're really good uh, snack to have. And iodine for the brain and the nervous system. So iodine can be found in seaweed and of course if one is using iodized salt then there's not going to be a deficiency of iodine either. So looking at how much we should actually be eating and drinking. So we have to get out of this idea that we're eating for two <laughs> and many women feel like that. They think, oh, there's a baby in there, so I need to be eating more. And many uh, people will say that to a pregnant woman too. Oh, no, 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 eat some more, you're pregnant. You know, eat this uh, nava japati, eat this uh, additional slice of whatever it is um, because you've got a baby inside. So it's actually really important that she only eats as per her need. If she is more hungry, uh, then of course she should eat a little bit more, but that hunger should be a physical hunger. It shouldn't be a mental hunger. And often there is the excuse that, oh, I'm pregnant, so I can eat what I want. Or I'm pregnant, so I'm going to eat this tub of ice cream. You know, so <laughs> there is this excuses there um, to eat basically whatever one wants. 
when really we know that tub of ice cream is not going to help with that baby growing. Um, but if she goes and has a nice salad or a nice piece of fruit, that's going to be more beneficial or a handful of nuts. So she should try to make sure that the foods that she's eating are going to be nutrient rich, nutrient dense, um, and that's going to be most helpful for her. So just eating extra food because she's pregnant is not necessarily helpful for her. So yes, definitely the idea that we have to eat double. Now, look at a, a small baby. Does it really need a, that whole plate of food that you're eating, like that second plate of food? You know, so we had to think of what's actually essential um, in a pregnancy. So yes, the for, in pregnancy, many women will just eat the same amount of food that they were eating before. Uh, and some women may eat just a little bit more, but they definitely don't need to eat the two. Uh, next, avoid skipping meals. So um, a lot of women do skip meals or if they're very busy, they may skip them or they might be going for intermittent fasting. So that's not really necessary in pregnancy. And often she actually needs to eat a little bit more regularly than that or have snacks in between because um, her blood sugar levels can drop, um, her blood pressure can drop. So she needs to make sure that she eats uh, regularly. And if she needs to eat anything more, it's usually a little more on the protein side. So whether it's some additional beans or some nut butters or um, some seeds um, that are going to be helpful for her. So there are some specific foods that are especially helpful during pregnancy um, that are just going to be a little bit more on the nourishing side. So things like almonds. Almonds can be uh, used, uh, we can uh, soak almonds and eat them, we can roast them, we can turn them into almond milk. You know, there's lots of options with almonds that we can have. Uh, we can eat Brazil nuts. Now, in some countries, Brazil nuts are very common, in others they're not. So, you know, eat what's local to you. Uh, different types of seeds. So there's things like pumpkin seeds, as I was talking about, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds. Um, in India, you get some of the uh, watermelon seeds and the rock melon seeds, like the tabus. Uh, those kind of seeds are often eaten in pregnancy. And uh, we can also make milks out of these seeds and nuts too. Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, figs. So uh, we can have the dried figs or the fresh figs, and especially they're having a lot of calcium in, so that's helpful. Uh, dates. Dates are, are recommended, um, especially in that last trimester, um, that can be helpful for the labor, for reducing the length of the labor. So milk, so things like uh, different types of soy milks, there's lots of fortified ones as well, like calcium and iron fortified uh, soy milks, uh, nut milks, uh, oat milk. Um, there's so many out there now and we can easily make our own too just by uh, soaking our nuts or seeds, um, rinsing and processing them up. We can make all sorts of things and we don't necessarily have to strain the milk so we can have everything else that's inside it too which can be very tasty. So all those kind of milks. Um, porridge, so oat porridge is well known to be very nourishing. Um, it helps to stabilize the blood sugar levels. So um, one doesn't have a drop in the, the blood sugar levels. Um, it just stays the same. And uh, it's nice to mix, you know, different types of nut milks into porridge. Oats is also really good for the nervous system. So it's uh, really helpful if she's feeling quite stressed as well. Then we have red millet. So red millet is very common in India, uh, also known as like nachni or ragi. Um, red millet is having uh, more iron in it. So it's recommended during pregnancy and also uh, during breastfeeding. And red millet is generally um, made into a flour and it can be, it can be added to things like porridge. So um, like you can have an oat porridge and you can add a few uh, tablespoons of red millet to it. One can eat uh, just the porridge itself. 
Um, it's always better to make it from scratch. There's lots of prepackaged kind of um, natni or ragi porridge and it's got loads of sugar in it, which isn't needed. Um, so one can make it oneself. Um, then also we can use it, the flour in different things that we bake. If we're making japatis or bread or other kind of stuff, it can be used. Beetroot is also a really good one um, for the iron and uh, we can have that raw, we can have it cooked, we can have it juiced. Green vegetables, of course there's loads of different types of green vegetables that are going to be very very helpful too with high amounts of minerals inside. So there are a few things that we want to be avoiding uh, during pregnancy. One of them is papaya. And in India, it's well known to avoid uh, papaya uh, in pregnancy because it's known to have an abortifacient quality so that it might lead to um, miscarriage or abortion later on. Um, some people also say pineapple. And there, there are different opinions on it. In some countries, some uh, women eat lots of papaya and they're okay, but others not so much. Um, one of the things you can think of is that if you eat a lot of something like papaya or pineapple, then one can also have diarrhea. And if you're having diarrhea, and especially if it's the last um, month or two, and there's a lot of contractions of um, in the body of, of the intestines, then this can have a reflex action on the uterus. So that could be a reason why uh, it's known to be a border uh, Anyway, there's lots of other fruits that we can eat. <laughs> um, then raw or undercooked fish is not recommended. Again, because of things like salmonella and um, listeria and other bacteria and things that are not um, suitable. Uh, fish with high levels of mercury, so things like uh, shark and swordfish, and of course all those deep sea fish uh, is better to avoid. Uh, raw meat and poultry and raw and undercooked eggs, you know, all those things, I mean, you don't generally eat anyway. Well, maybe some people eat certain raw meats, but raw poultry is never been recommended for any any person. And with raw eggs also, because of the salmonella, you, you don't want to be having it. Um, and same with unpasteurized cheeses, it's not recommended. And then, of course, caffeine. So uh, it's better to reduce the amounts of caffeine that one is um, ingesting. So looking at our diet for particular problems. So if she is feeling nausea, then she may want to eat smaller amounts and eating very often, okay? like we've already discussed. Generally, she won't want to have the foods that are having very strong odors. Uh, I still remember in pregnancy, the certain smells that made me feel sick. <laughs> um, and even now I find it difficult to eat those things because of that association. So you want to try and avoid certain uh, strong odors. Uh, then uh, often eating carbon carbohydrate rich foods are going to be uh, more suitable for her. So whether it's like a dry jafadi or a dry piece of a piece of toast or some plain rice or something that is very, very simple. Uh, generally avoiding the spicy foods that are going to be irritating, um, especially if she's having a lot of pitta. Um, the spices are going to be very aggravating and also with the really fatty foods, they're going to be really hard to digest. So I wrote here also dry crackers in the morning. Um, a lot of women also prefer to eat fruit. Um, whether it's like a pear or apple or um, musambi or something that's nice and simple and very light. Uh, for heartburn, so when the acid is coming up, uh, eating small amounts of food, so not eating really large meals, and then staying upright. So she shouldn't eat and then lay down because that's going to immediately make um, those acids come up. Then avoiding things like the fatty foods, the spicy foods. Um, for some people, yogurt can be helpful, um, especially if it's turned into buttermilk. So for example, if you have a glass of water and say two teaspoons of yogurt um, and churn it together to make it into buttermilk, so that is a little more on the cooling side and that can be helpful for that acid. 
banana is another one that can have a soothing effect and some also find uh, cow's milk can reduce uh, that heat too. Ghee is another option that you can add to food that can help with um, heartburn. Then uh, if there's constipation, so making sure to eat lots of um, foods with high amounts of fibre in and a lot of fluids. And for gestational diabetes, uh, increasing the amount of vitamin D uh, and chromium. Chromium helps with uh, sugar cravings and it is found in mushrooms uh, especially. Uh, you can also get it in supplement form if needed. And of course for gestational diabetes, it's important to reduce the amount of sugars that one is eating uh, and making sure also that one isn't eating too much fruit because some fruits also have high amounts of sugar. So if you think of like mango or, or grapes, um, they're very high. So looking at allergies and intolerances. So in different countries, there's different problems with allergies. Um, nowadays, because in, in many Western countries especially, uh, kids are having so many allergies and a lot of women can be worried about eating different types of foods because they feel it's going to be affecting uh, the baby but it's actually not recommended to be avoiding foods during pregnancy. Obviously certain foods have to be avoided you know like raw fish and raw eggs and all that stuff but otherwise having a well-balanced diet is really uh, important. When her baby is born and when she's breastfeeding, if there are problems for the baby, if it can't digest foods uh, very well, if the baby's uh, crying a lot, then it might be possible that something that the mother is eating is not really suiting baby. So in that case, she can try eliminating certain food for a while and see if it makes a difference. Um, for some babies, they, they can react really, really quickly. For especially um, it seems to cow's milk. So if the the mother has a glass of cow's milk or you know some cheese or something, for some babies within half an hour they can be uh, screaming because of the disruption in their body. So um, some things can come very easily and obviously, and other um, times it can be a little difficult to understand exactly what that food is. And it might be that she needs to really experiment and take foods away for at least a week, up to two weeks, um, before she can start to understand what, what is working and what isn't. And so, yeah, moving to the breastfeeding diet. So one needs to make sure that they're eating properly and not dieting. And a lot of women do want to start uh, going on diets and things like that because they want to lose weight, they want to come back to their original uh, shape that they were in before so they think that they'll start dieting but it's actually really important to have a really well balanced diet and in fact during breastfeeding is a time where she may actually need to eat a little bit more. Many women are hungrier when they've had their baby because they're producing milk and that is a really really important job. <laughs> And so one does need to have a really nicely well-balanced diet to have really great um, nourishing milk. So zinc and iodine, calcium are all essential, um, vitamin C, uh, which we can get in especially all those citrus um, fruits and certain berries, tropical fruits, tomatoes here, we've written capsicum and potato. Um, vitamin A, so in the form of beta carotene, so yellow vegetables are what comes to my mind every time. So uh, carrots, uh, pumpkin, but also in um, dark green vegetables too, things like broccoli, kale and all that. So it's really essential to have a good diet uh, when breastfeeding. And if she's wanting to be losing weight, then actually breastfeeding is going to help her a lot uh, to reduce the weight as well. So foods that increase milk production so the nuts, different types of nuts um, can help. Asparagus, so asparagus as a vegetable or shatavari, which is kind of the same thing as a, well, the, the fresh version and then you've got the dried version. Shatavari is often used uh, in India 
as a supplement for increasing the milk production. So one can mix it with a drink or, or take it as a, in a tablet form. This can be very helpful. Uh, fennel. So fennel as a vegetable and fennel seeds. So if one is in India, um, body shop or sumph. Um, and not every country has it as a vegetable as well. So you just see what's available to you. And a seed is another one um, that can be helpful for producing it. Dill. So uh, dill, the seeds and also the vegetable or some people think of it as a herb. Uh, the Hindi name, or it might be the Marathi name, I think is Shipu. Uh, then we've got fenugreek uh, or methi. So fenugreek, we can use the seeds, and we can also use the leaves, can be helpful. And uh, especially fenugreek can be quite bitter. Uh, so if you want to be ingesting the seeds and you want a little bit more of that, then you can take it in a tablet form, which is easier to ingest than loads of seeds. <laughs> um, oat porridge, so oats are gonna be helping to increase um, the production. Uh, alfalfa, so alfalfa is, uh, eaten as sprouts commonly in the West and it's used a lot in India with the seeds. Often it's made into like ladus um, for a new mother. And of course extra fluids are definitely necessary and that that many women will realize when when they start breastfeeding that uh, when she's feeding her baby she can get so thirsty. So it's important she has like a glass of water or some drink um, with her when she's feeding because, you know, to make good milk, you need fluids. So it's really essential that she is drinking a little, little bit extra. And also there's, there's foods you can make uh, like uh, biscuits, cookies. We call them lactation cookies. So um, I can give you recipes for that if you're interested, but um, they can include things like oats uh, inside, lots of nuts uh, and seeds. Um, brewer's yeast is another one that is commonly used, um, or nutritional yeast, um, which can be really helpful to increase the milk. And having a lactation cookie is a really good uh, thing to give to the new mothers because they taste nice, but they really do have a, a good effect. Uh, so some women, they just eat one and even that same day, they can feel that um, their breasts are producing more milk, which is kind of amazing. So those are just some of the foods. And of course, there are a few things that we need to avoid during breastfeeding as well. So coffee, high amounts of coffee should definitely be avoided because that caffeine is going to reach to baby. Um, chocolate. Now, many women uh, find that their babies... Uh, don't like it if they're eating chocolate. Um, it can create um, some digestive disturbances for some babies. Uh, garlic, now there's two sides of this. Some say yes, uh, garlic should be avoided and some say no, it shouldn't. Um, so basically you have to see how your baby goes with it. Spicy foods, obviously, you know, if one's eating loads of chili, that chili is gonna be going to the baby as well. And many babies, you know, if the mother has eaten something super spicy, they don't like the milk, they complain, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And of course, alcohol. So she shouldn't be uh, drinking alcohol during her pregnancy. And if she's drinking alcohol when she's breastfeeding, then she should only have very, very small uh, amount. But of course, it's better to avoid it um, completely. So that's a little bit of information about how we should be eating uh, during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Hurry on.